Hallelujah. Worthy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, God, for victory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We thank you for victory. Yeah. Hallelujah. We thank you for victory. Come on and sing it. Come on and shout it. Come on with the fruit of your lips. Give him glory. Be well of him. Show him how much you appreciate. We appreciate you, God. We're so grateful. We're so thankful. Thank you, Lord, that we have the victory. All over the building. Come on, make a joyful shout. Hallelujah. Yes. We thank you for victory. We thank you for victory. Yes. Hallelujah. We thank you for victory. We thank you for victory. We thank you for victory. Come on and clap those hands. Come on and help me say. By the hand of the Almighty, I've been set free. Heals the liver, make a Now I'm walking in victory. Oh, by the hand of the Almighty, the Almighty, I've been set free. Heals the liver, make a Now I'm walking in victory. Oh, by the hand of the Almighty, God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Walking in victory, 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 got my peace back. Oh, said I'm walking in victory, I'm walking in victory, I'm walking in victory, got my hope back. Oh, said I'm walking in victory, I'm walking in victory, I'm walking in victory. Got my strength set by the hand of the Almighty. I've been set free. They come free. Yeah. Oh, by the hand of the Almighty God. Oh, you're so mighty. Oh, so mighty. Oh, come on, you say that I'm walking in victory. I'm walking in victory. I'm walking in victory. Got my joy back. Oh, said I'm walking in victory. I'm walking in victory. I'm walking in victory. Got my peace back. Yes, and I'm walking in victory. I'm walking in victory. I'm walking in victory. Got my hope back. Yes, and I'm walking in victory. I'm walking in victory. I'm walking in victory. Got my strength back. Got my joy back. Got my peace back. Got my home back. I got my strength back. Got my joy back.
Isn't that something? And doesn't life come at you in a way that sometimes you kind of feel like, what? <laughs> Amen. Then you shake yourself and you say, got my joy back. Got my hope back. Come on, let me hear you. Got my hope back. Hey. hey. Come on, shake your back. Say, it. got my hope back. Hey. What did you get back? Did you get your strength back? Got my joy back. Got my peace back. Say, it. got my hope back. Got my strength back. Hey, 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 hey. 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 hey, 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 come on, hey, 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 I like that, thank you, Lord. Come on, give them glory. Thank you, Lord. Come on, let me hear you shout to the Lord. Oh, give them glory right there, right there. Shout to the Lord with a voice of triumph. Glory to the Lamb of God. Thank you, Lord. 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 Now, kind Father, we love you. We praise you. We thank you tonight. Because, Lord, Nehemiah was right when he said the joy of the Lord is indeed our strength. And, Father, we thank you, Lord, that uh, we're strengthened in your mighty power tonight. So we're strong in the Lord and in the power of his might, as Ephesians 6 teaches us. And, Father, I thank you God, that tonight is indeed a night of victory. Thank you, Lord. You, you, you know how to pack a church out <laughs> in midweek and remind us that we got the victory. And I thank you for that, and I thank you that the devil never wins. So our feet are shod with the preparation and gospel of peace, and our loins are girded about with truth. We have on a breastplate of righteousness, the shield of faith, the sword of the spirit, the helmet of salvation. We have love, and our faith is indeed working by love. We got keys to the kingdom. We bind you, devil. We take authority over you. Come on, take authority over all like manner of evil in the name of Jesus. Satan, we put you out of our soul. We're not preoccupied by the affairs of the day. We're free. We're free. We're free. And he who the Son says free is free indeed. So, Father, we thank you, Lord. Thank you for the move of God tonight. Lord, you've given me a word for your people tonight. Lord, it will come literally with demonstration. And I pray, God, that somebody, not somebody, all of us, by faith, leave here with brand new perspectives on how to manage who we are. Witchcraft proof us tonight. Make us better. Make us stronger. Help us, Lord, Ephesians or Hebrews 2 and 1, not to let something slip. Gird up the loins of our mind. Be renewed in the spirit of our mind. I know that's our assignment. And so we thank you for it. We call it done in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Come on, clap your hands, all you people. Now add a shout. Come on, the Bible says shout unto the Lord. That's what the Bible says. It says shout unto the Lord, but it tells you how to shout. Man, you got to shout with a voice of triumph. Open up your mouth and give him the glory to his name. Thank you, Lord. Amen, 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 amen. Woo, Jesus. Oh, glory, 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 glory. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hey. Hey. Glory to God. Glory to God. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. My, my, my. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Well, if you know he's worthy, you can get stuck there for a little bit. It's all right. Amen. Hallelujah. Look like the Lord just blew some fresh air into this ministry. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for revival. Thank you, Lord. Come on, return to your first love and give them praise like you know them. Oh, hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Amen. All right. Amen.
Well, there, there is a word from the Lord tonight, and we're going to jump right in this thing. The anointing is thick in here, y'all, and we're we just going to get in it. I honor my sweet wife tonight. I thank God for her. On your way to your seat, greet two or three people. Thank God for them tonight, and let's get in the word of God. To our broadcast audience, I'm learning to treat you all like my congregation because you are. So welcome to Bible study tonight, and thank you for joining us in this time of study. I pray that it, it, it changes your life. On Sunday, we started a, didn't start a talk, but we kicked off a subtopic in a thought. We've been preaching on salvation, and I think you're going to enjoy what I have to share tonight because it's going to be more than a gut check. It's going to tool you with what you need to not succumb to what the Bible calls the wiles of the enemy, the strategies of the enemy. If we wrestle not against flesh and blood, that implies that you can lose. If it's a wrestling match, it implies that there is something that can beat you if you don't fight the right way. I did a short today, and you all will be privy to know what the ideals of it are before it even comes out. But um, people have said down through the years, Satan don't have no power. That's not Bible. The Bible never told you the devil has no power. In fact, Ephesians 6 gave you the four tiers of demonic hosts that will come after you on any given day. Furthermore, Luke 10, 19 told us that we have powers over all the power of the enemy. So he has power, but the good news is according to Colossians 2 and 15, Jesus disarmed him, rendered him powerless and ineffective, so he doesn't have power over you. As long as you know how to put the whole armor on and in the name of Jesus take authority over the ways that the enemy comes against you. So we're going to deal with that a little bit tonight, and I think this is going to bless you. And I, if I, I run a little over time, you know, uh, humor me uh, and just stick with me because shepherds know how to shepherd their flock. So I want all my leaders in here, so I collapse the youth in. I won't tell you who else we've collapsed in, but this is a very strategic night because I want you to get what the Lord wants you to get so that you don't get taken by surprise. Amen? So we talked Sunday from this thought, you really need to change. And uh, Paul said in Romans 7, 24, O wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? In other words, I'm on the inside of a flawed, carnal body, and I, I need to be delivered from it from time to time. And we talked about that and how, uh, quite frankly, you need to be ch uh, changed or saved, rather, in the salvation series, and that is saved from yourself. Not just the deliverance that delivers you from poverty. Not just the deliverance that delivers you from sickness and disease. We thank God for the things that accompany salvation. But sometimes, amen, you need to be saved. You need to be delivered from yourself. And if you're not uh, appropriating that, in Ephesians, uh, Hebrews 2 and 1, you, you let something slip. And don't stay on top of it, amen? You can succumb to a missed opportunity in life. You can succumb to what God really had in store for you. Time and chance happening to them all. And you can miss out on your chance by not managing you, all right? So, so we talked about that from an introductory standpoint. But tonight, amen, we really going to talk about, amen, the how-tos of that. And so tonight's subject is you really need to change, but we're going to deal with you need to change from the inside out. We're going to talk about those insides tonight. And my subtopic, as they would show it to you on the screen, is we're going to talk about the heart monitor. <laughs> so we're going to deal with that tonight. And I want my young people in here and I want my old people like in here, amen, because your heart, your heart is something, amen, that you are responsible for changing from the inside out. God's not going to change your heart without your permission. God's not going to guard your heart without your permission. The Bible tells you to guard your heart with all diligence, Jeremiah 17, because out of it, that is, out of your heart, out of your heart flows the issues of life. And if you don't monitor your heart, the heart monitor, amen, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he, translation, so goes he. Amen. The pattern of your thoughts. I'm not talking about the thoughts that are on the outside. Everybody gets a bad thought from time to time, but I'm talking about the IV leak that goes down into the heart, into your knower, into your believer. 
when in fact, in a moment, as a result of that, you'll find yourself waking up, as we said on Sunday, saying, how did we get here? So let's go to tonight's theme passage and use our time to the max. Go to Luke chapter 11, and uh, Jesus is giving a woe to the Pharisees and the lawyers. Don't need all that theology tonight, but he's really talking to the facade people. He's really talking to the people, amen, that quote unquote put the best on the outside. And we got to be careful when we live a life of putting the best on the outside and our insides are not commiserate with that. That I, I, I'm looking mighty good, I'm looking mighty healthy on the outside. But my inside is not commiserate with what you see. Everybody in this room tonight looks kind of good. Ladies got silk wraps, <laughs> nice braids, and beautiful hats. The brethren look good. Some of you just got off work, yet you look good. Other brothers got ties on and, and all the above. And, and yet, uh, with all of that, that facade, in fact, when you go to build your new house, you pick your facade. You can pick what they call your elevation. You can go with elevation A, B, or C. And so you want the peaks on the front, or do you want brick on the front? Or do you want stucco on the front? Amen. You are picking your facade. But uh, there's a whole lot of people that pick their facade, but the inside of their house smell like old sand. Didn't that bring it home? You pick your facade, but the carpet smell like cat pee. You pick your facade every Sunday morning when you put the beautiful dress on and the garb and the wonderful makeup, amen, but the inside smells like dog poop. Because you manage the outside, but you didn't do a good job of maintaining the inside. Are you all still here? And that's what we're going to deal with tonight because Jesus was telling these religious people that. He was telling us in, in, in no uncertain terms that as he spoke to the Pharisees and asked them to dine with him, so he went and sat down to eat. And when the Pharisees saw it, he marveled that they had not first washed before dinner. Do you all see that? How many of y'all know you got to clean up? Jesus said, whoa, 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 homie. I heard Bill Winston say that in the service. Whoa, 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 homie. Amen. You got to wash up before you come and, and, and eat with me. How many of y'all know you can't have a stinky heart around me? You got to rinse off is what Jesus is saying. That's what Pastor Gabe is saying. Then the Lord said to him, now you Pharisees, this is so good. Y'all look at the next two verses. Make the outside of the cup and the dish clean. Look at the metaphor. But your inward part is full of greed and wickedness. You make the outside of the dish real clean. You look real good. You look like you got it together. Boy, you sure do know how to sing on that praise team. Boy, you sure do know how to unlock the doors of the church. You make your outside look real good. But your inward part is full of greed and wickedness. What are we talking about tonight? Change from... Inside. The inside out. What's the subtopic? The heart. Don't worry. I'm, I'm going to check your levels in just a second. In verse number 40, the Bible says, amen, uh, foolish ones. Did not he who made the outside make the inside? Woo, Jesus. Did not he who made the outside made you look so pretty and so Amen. Wonderfully and fearfully made. We love to quote that verse, but that wonderfully and fearfully made transcends the beauty on the outside and it ought to be going down into the inside. You clean up. That's what the Bible says. Now, keep in mind that word clean is crucial tonight because you clean up on the outside of the cup. You make the outside of this verse 39 clean. Amen. But foolish ones, shouldn't you be paying attention to the outside and the inside too? Are y'all still here? Yeah. But rather you give alms of such things as you have, then indeed all things are, are, are clean to you. But woe to you Pharisees. You got to be careful because you are religious. 
You tithe mint and rule and all manner of herbs and pass by justice and love God. These you should be doing. You should be serving in the church. You should be diligent. You should be timely. You should be paying your tithe. You, but you should be doing these things without leaving the others undone. What's a part of the others without leaving your insides undone? Are y'all still here? And he goes on and he talks about more woes and talks about being a hypocrite in verse number 44. And then I love verse number 45 because this is how witchcraft gets in. This is how your heart gets tarnished. This is why some of you better start governing how you hear preaching and teaching because this is when the devil gets you. In verse number 45, then one of the lawyers answered and said unto him, Teacher, by saying the things you just said, by telling us we better clean up our inside, by telling us that we better keep our heart right, by telling us, amen, that we need to get a disciple, (laughs) by telling us uh, the Great Commission that we need to evangelize, by telling us that we need to do more than serve in the church, by telling us that we need to be, amen, clean on the inside and challenge our heart, and we need to manage what we are thinking and feeling. By telling us these things, you are a reproach unto us. Show them the New Living Translation of the same verse. Teacher said an expert in religious of law, of law you have insulted us. You've insulted us, too, in what you just said. What did Jesus insult them in what he just said? He insulted them, Kristen, in what he just said by telling them that you not only need to look good on the outside, but you got to clean up the inside. When teaching and preaching and discipleship insults you, you're in trouble. Stay with me. That's a part of your heart monitor. I said when teaching and preaching and discipleship, what's a part of discipleship? Root word, discipline. When you get disciplined and getting disciplined sets you back, you are backsliding. It's happening right before your eyes. I want you to know it. I want you to know that the day you move from KCC being the best thing since sliced bread, can't get enough of Pastor Gabe and all his teaching, just love that sharp, solid word he brings to why he had to say that, you are officially backsliding. Amen. It has begun. Are you all with me? Because your heart is doing something. Your heart, the word wicked, this is where we get the word wicker from. Y'all know that twisted furniture? The word wicked means twisted. Amen. Wickedness is starting to set in and, and, and like a braided hat, like a braided basket. Amen. The things that you once saw as godly and right, you are now starting to see them through the lens of reproach, of insult and offense and witchcraft proof 101, heart monitor 101 to keep witchcraft influence and wicked spiritual influence off of you is never get offended by Christ. Christian doctrine and order. That's a crucial catch. If you find yourself getting offended by discipleship, slap yourself on purpose. I mean physically. Pray for yourself. Lay hands on yourself. Sometimes you need to do that. We like to lay hands on everybody else. Go get some oil. Lay hands on yourself and take authority over that devil. Resist that devil, James 4 and 7, and he will flee. Are you all getting anything out of this? So what does your heart say about you? Come on, prayer callers, over in Proverbs 27 and 19, as in water face uh, reflects face, so a man's heart does what? Reveals the man. The man's heart does what? What does your heart say about you? Come on, it's in in there, it's in there. It does what? It reveals you. It tells us who you really are. Is this good this night? Amen. The heart reveals you. Y'all, if if you're a teacher or preacher, you can relate to this. You ever taught a message you was enjoying? This is it. This is one of my favorite subjects. I love teaching on faith, which has to do with prosperity, health, and healing. But, Tawana, I got to tell you, at the top of my list, and those of you who've been with me any amount of time, if you track my prayer calls, I believe over the last 14 years, I have more lessons on the heart than any other subject. Would you agree with that, Karina? It's one of my favorite subjects because it's the very thing that has made and kept me successful. Knowing how to regulate my heart. Understanding Jeremiah 17 that the heart is desperately wicked. 
that your heart, under the guise of evil influences that press upon you, will start to believe. It's not the thought that's the problem, but it will start to believe differently over time as that thought intravenously leaks down into your heart. And that's why you got to put a guard on your heart. Are you all still here tonight? So I really want to walk through this, and I really want to witch-proof our church one more time. Amen. Because anytime I see anybody succumb to witchcraft, I automatically evaluate and say, what should I have taught? What should I have done? And then I go to the drawing board and realize it's not one subject I didn't teach. It's not one thing that I didn't remind you of. In fact, I've taught Hebrews 2 and 1 more than a little bit. Don't let something slip. So when you get taken over by evil, by wickedness, it is because you let something slip. It's not just about leaving a church. When you end up in a defiled bed, come on, you really need to change. It's because you let something slip. No, you went on vacation with your boyfriend. It had nothing to do, amen, with the thought or the idea that you couldn't sustain under pressure. No, you flee you for us. There's some pressures you don't even subject yourself to, so there's no opportunity to slip because guess what? I'm not over your house when nobody's home. There's no opportunity, come on, ladies, for you to see my external extremities because I'm not over your house when nobody's home and we can't fall. Are you all still here? Come on, singles, kingdom dating, we can't slip up. I can't get in mess. Oh, I got to teach that a little bit because it's in the room. I can't trip up because I lost your number and I blocked it at the same time. Is anybody here? When I get on an anointed point, it gets quiet. I can't miss it because I'm not there to miss it. You know why I'm not going to catch a man a plane to Iowa tonight? I'm not at an airport. There's no opportunity for me to catch a 7.30 flight to Iowa when I am in church. I can't catch that flight. Are you all here tonight? Amen. Is method still as important as determination? Do you need to make some strategic decisions about where you are and why you're there and what this could lead to? Come on, heart managers. Everybody say, put your heart monitor on. Now, this is so important because I told you, amen, that this word heart, Hebrew word, comes from the word leb, amen. And don't sleep on this message, really get it, because this concept of leb, amen, they have it on the screen. Uh, It means the heart of a man, the soul of a man, but I like the real definition. It is the mind, the knowledge, this is what you should write if you write anything, thinking and reflection, thinking and reflection. Memory, inclination, and I like this. It's almost like they put them in rank order. And ultimately, resolution and determination. Because I continue to think on this thing, Mm -hmm. reflect on this thing, Mm -hmm. memorize this thing, ruminate the offense that I shouldn't have been offended by. It moved me to resolution and determination of will. What is that? In many cases, a wrong decision. (laughs) Now, this same thing can work in the positive. You could think that God has made me the head and not the tail. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. I'm the head and not the tail. Father, disciple me, lead me, guide me, teach me through my pastor, Help me with my uh, heart. Help me with my life. You can reflect on all the right things. Memorize all the things the Lord has done for you. That'll move you into Thanksgiving, won't it? Yes. You won't fall under the curse of things. What, are y'all here tonight? Yes. Yeah, the, the curse of ungratefulness. Is that good? You won't fall prey to the people that move you out of the... Can y'all see all these prophetic messages? The people that move you out of the will of God. If you need to, you'll stand up and tell your wife you sound foolish. Because you won't fall prey to the people that move you out of the... Are y'all here? Because now you got reflection working and you got good memory working and you still remember where you got healed. You still remember where you came out of the dung heap. You still remember where your money came. You still remember how your life got on track. You still remember what the Lord has done for you. Oh, let me see if you still going to clap. You still remember how the Lord used your pastor to bring you out of a rut. 
and how there's no way your life would have been where it is today if you didn't get the kind of teaching and pedigree of ministry that you are a part of up until now. Is there anybody in the room with a memory? If you got a memory, you ought to be shouting and doing something. You ought to be telling God something. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Woo! Boy, I'm enjoying this word tonight. Come on, take your seat. Let's walk through it systematically. You got time? Yeah. Memory, thinking, reflection, the heart, the heart, as a result, moves to resolution and determination. Now, whatever you've been maintaining and whatever you've been entertaining and whatever you've been vacillating on and keeping in your mind, that's what you are growing in. That's what you are now becoming. Amen. I became a prosperous man financially because in my younger years, I thought that I could be. <laughs> Hallelujah. I always knew that I could live in certain places. I always believed I could drive a certain way. I always believed that there was no reason why everybody else could have a tailored suit and gaiters on. And I couldn't. Did I lose you on that? I always knew that. I always knew that there were certain qualities of life that I could enjoy with integrity while paying my taxes. I always knew that that was a possibility. I remember prior to pastoring a church years ago, I would say stuff like, when I get my church, <laughs> when I'm pastoring, when I first got married and we didn't have a church yet, I would say to first lady, and some of y'all need to get a visualization of this, I would literally say to her, how are you going to sit on Sunday mornings? <laughs> are y'all seeing this? I created an image of where I knew God was taking me. I had a Genesis 13, 14 moment where I started looking from where I was. <laughs> and because I looked from where I was back there, I'm now in where I looked from. And there's nothing missing, nothing lacking in my life today. I could go to Hawaii, Hawaii or China tomorrow, and I think I would pick Hawaii if I did go somewhere. But you understand my point. There's no stopping me now. There are no limitations on my life. Are you all here? But that's because I vacillated. I thought about I reflected on constantly what I could have. I've thought about, I reflected on constantly that I could. I always wanted to renovate an old building and turn it into a business. So I remember thinking about that and vacillating that, and the Lord opened that up, and I remember putting all my money into that opportunity and going all in. This is many years ago now, y'all. I, I just remember those, those, those moments of just really understanding that there is no reason why I can't be that guy that I can really have that. Are you all listening to me? And I thought about that, and I vacillated on that, and I reflected on that, and I memorized on all that, and before you know it, amen, the Lord gave me the pretty wife that I thought about, memorized, and contemplated over, amen, just the way, amen, that I like her. And he always does exceed and abundantly above all you could ever ask or think, you know. So if there's a single, amen, seasoned man watching, he gave me a pretty mother-in-law to boot. I don't ever know you might want to come to church because there's a gorgeous single. And she's not broke either, I want you to know. She's, she's a good catch. Amen. I hope I didn't embarrass my mother-in-law. But it's true. It, it, it is true. Amen. It is true. Amen. Are y'all with me? He always does more than what you ask. He's a good God. So I thought about that, Mom. I vacillated that. Mel, I, I stood to my guns on that. Amen. And before you know it, God just started packaging that thing and putting it together in my life. And you follow where I'm coming from? And that's what I live today. But that's what I allowed in my thinker. That's what I allowed in my knower. And Michelle, that's what I allowed my memory to reflect on. Are you listening to me? I would watch a Dr. Fred Price, and I knew there was no difference between him and me. Right. In fact, I was attracted to him because he was buoyant. Pastor Gould, buoyant, strong pastors of great, big, huge churches. Are you all listening to me? And I understood that there was no reason why I couldn't have that. Are you all listening to me? And the Lord granted my prayer. So why am I teaching this tonight? Because your heart is the crucial catch because as a man thinketh in his heart also means, amen, that as a man believes in his heart. <laughs> With the heart, Romans 10, 9 through 12, man believes unto salvation. Your heart is going to release faith into the outcome that you want in life. Amen. So you keep decreeing that you're going to turn the keys in 
on your pillow talk with your wife, you know what's going to end up happening? You're going to turn the keys in. And you're going to look up one day and say, what did I give up? <laughs> Daryl Coley sung a song years ago. I'm not bashful, y'all. I'm a shepherd. He sung a song years ago called When Sunday Comes. <laughs> what you going to do when Sunday comes? Are you all with me? You may be careful cutting your nose off to spite your face. I'm talking to somebody tonight. This is a good preservation message. I said, you better be careful how you walk in and out of the people that have the ability to catapult your life to the next level. You better be careful how you answer somebody who can determine your outcomes. Because if they're having a bad day, amen, you're having a bad day, they might be having a worse day. <laughs> they might not be in the mood for that foolishness today. <laughs> Are y'all with me? Somebody say amen. amen. Come on, I don't want to call anybody out, but I got some managers in the room. I'm not talking about just myself, y'all. I've heard the stories where uh, people came in and resigned, and I think they was just having a moment, but they accepted their resignation. <laughs> Are y'all with me? That's what they've been waiting for you to say. Somebody say amen. But why? Come on, young people, stay with me. Uh, as you give up what your parents could be giving you or as you give up what you could have for Christmas, as you give up the opportunities because you had one more stubborn moment of dishonor, as you forfeit, hallelujah, the car that you didn't even know your dad was thinking about giving you on your 16th birthday. You had no idea that he had already put a $200 deposit on it, but you had to cuss him out one more time because you let witchcraft get the best of you. He called that man, told him, keep the $200. He don't need the car after all. And you don't even know what you missed. Yes. Right. So good. I believe it's the mercies of God when people get out of the will of God that they don't even know what God would have done for them. They don't know how close they really were to a breakthrough because if you found out what was getting ready to happen in your life, the bonus that really was going to come your way, you would have made a different, I wish I had some help. You would have governed that witchcraft and put that stuff where it belonged. I don't have no room to, oh, come on somebody. If you ain't here tonight, you're just not going to jack it up in your life. Somebody say amen. <laughs> My wife has been so sweet to me as of late, and um, she's a sweet person anyway. Are y'all here tonight? And I just took a notion today, man. I went, and uh, the plant manager gave us an opportunity to uh, have an extended lunch today, I, you know. And so I, I did. I had probably an hour and a half lunch at least. Um, usually doesn't give us that long, but I, I took that today, and I thank him for it. I'm going to give him a thank you note um, when I see him. But um, for those of you watching don't know me, I don't have a plant manager. <laughs> but that's a joke, okay, running joke at KCC. But I did, I, I, and, and, and during my lunchtime after I got a haircut and a nice shave, I just took a notion, I said, you know what, she's been so good to me, so sweet to me. And I went and stopped by a little flower shop and I, I grabbed some nice roses and a nice card and uh, some of her favorite cookies. And uh, when she came in to work this afternoon, they were waiting for her on her desk. And um, I, I, I just kept hearing Tory Burch. Tory Burch. That's, that was just kept rooming up. Just Tory Burch. Tory Burch. That, now, y'all laughing, but I'm as serious as my mom would say as a heart attack. I'm so serious. I kept hearing that. I said, I wonder how I could bless her. And I kept hearing Tory Burch. And I'm telling you, your pastor's so spiritual. At that moment, uh, an advertisement came through my text message that literally said, your Tory Burch package has arrived. So evidently, maybe she had already ordered something, I don't know. <laughs> and it was somehow connected to my email. So that feed it through my phone. I said, there it is. So I sent over the Tory Burch gift on my behalf. Are you all getting this? Now, what's the reason for the story? If my wife had been vegetied this morning, or Jezebel, or any of their cousins, there's, y'all here tonight, there is no way, that y'all know my eternal no way, there is no way, 
I would have done that for her. And I'm going to tell you, our relationship dynamic, she would not have even known she missed it because I wouldn't even told her. I would have left it in the car. I would have saw her this evening and said, baby girl, how you doing? <laughs> and the stuff that was going to be, oh, come on, coming her way because she let witchcraft seep in that heart and manage her responses, it would have gotten cut off. I want my babes to learn tonight. I want my senior people to learn tonight because this lesson, regardless to what your development is in God, regardless to whether or not you're a babe, a toddler, a, a, a teenager, or an adult in the Lord, amen, I believe there are at least four levels. You know, Kenneth, Kenneth Hagin taught about the growth stages of, of a Christian, amen, and I believe we grow in different stages, but I'm telling you, matters of the heart apply to every stage. Managing witchcraft applies to what? Every stage. So tonight, we're going to help you put your heart monitor on. And uh, over in 1 Thessalonians, I like to give you Bible for anything I do. And chapter 2 and verse number 4, the Bible talks about how God himself, amen, does blood tests on us. How God himself does enzyme tests on us. You know, when a person has a massive heart attack, one of the ways they know is because I believe of the enzymes that, that has been released. I noticed because I had a relative recently have a massive heart attack, over 90% blockages. And some of my surgeon is sitting to my left, so after service she can come up and say, now, Pastor, it's not enzymes, actually. It's... Um, this is how we test that, all right? So I'll check with her, and she'll tell me if I'm right or wrong. But uh, right now, it's enzymes, and just say amen. And go, and go with me, amen. As my dad would say, say what I'm saying. Stop disagreeing, because you don't know nothing either. Amen. Uh, but over in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, and verse like you've been through medical school, be quiet. Amen. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, and verse number 4. Bible says, but as we have been approved by God to be entrusted with the gospel, even so we speak, this is a big statement, not as what? Pleasing men. This same Paul talked about in Colossians chapter 3, amen, how to not be doing stuff to please men with eye service. But he said in that same passage in Colossians chapter 3, verse 21 through 23, you read it on your free time, he said you do it with sincerity of heart. I met with some men before service tonight, and I gut checked them all, and I want them to understand that if you can't do what you're doing around me with sincerity of heart, now is the time to bow out of what you're doing. Amen. That's right. Not only do we not need you, we don't want you. Are you all with me? I don't want to date anybody that is uh, tired of sitting next to me. That's right. Do I have any help in the room tonight? Are you all still here? Are you growing in the Lord? So God says, he said, not even so we speak. But Paul said, man, we don't even speak to please men, but the heart monitor. But God does what? We speak to please God who does what? Test our hearts. Test our heart. God does not test you with evil. Understand the difference. But he does test, i.e., measure the levels in your heart. He measures how your heart is doing. What thoughts you are allowing, not the ones on the outside, what thoughts you are allowing to tweak him, your knower, your insides. You know, this is why the Bible teaches us to, to be renewed in our inward man. Day by day. We, we constantly got to do this thing. You can't go to sleep on this. You got to keep your foot on that devil. You can't determine, man, I've been keeping myself all quarter long last quarter. But right now, I just need to be on a hiatus. That's when you get Pearl Harbor. And I'm going to show you that later on because you're not monitoring your heart. And so I thought about a neat way to bring this home for the saints. And, I, you know, I just downloaded, amen, a, 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 a little heart monitor, amen, that I would like you to take a look at. Amen. So that we can answer a key question that I want everybody to leave Bible study answering tonight. Uh, as my team puts that on the screen. Amen. Let's just understand what the Bible means when God says he tests the heart. This is a depiction of what's going on with you on any given day. You see three different elements to read on this and my nurses and docs in the room and we do have them they could 
candidly tell you what all three mean and what this monitor means and what outcomes they're looking at on this. And, but I think we can all relate to one element of a heart monitor that you have probably learned through popular culture is called flatlining. You see, you want your heart monitor to be having those bumps and waves. If we can't figure anything else out about medicine and about how to monitor who we are, we kind of want some activity. Because when your heart goes doo, instead of what it's doing today, amen, there's something going on that should not be going on. That's when they come in with the, yeah, and they start shh, clear. Come on. Right. And they, they hook you up to these apparatuses and and, and, and the nurses in the room and, and, and all the experts, they could really tell you about other things that they're measuring. And, and you ever go, I go to visit members in the hospital and it, and it just amazes me to see the whole just I would call it entourage, just the collage of things that that nurse comes in and pushes buttons on and restarts that IV and does this and, and resets that button and does that button. And in the medical community, they understand that they they must do this to successfully help a patient survive their condition. And whenever the enemy is trying to put something on you, and I'm not talking about sickness and disease right now, I'm talking about attitudes. I'm talking about dispositions. When the enemy is trying to put embitterness on you, when the enemy is trying to put covetous on you, or any of those things mentioned in Colossians chapter 3 or Galatians chapter 5, it is your responsibility to make sure that you are not spiking. So the question I want to ask you based off of this image alone is how and where are you spiking? <laughs> what part of your heart is spiking tonight? Amen. Amen. I mean, do you look at your fellow sister in the Lord and get frustrated because her hair is a little longer and softer than yours? What part are you saw, uh, spiking? Do you get vexed when offerings are raised? At what point are you spiking? I sure hope you don't spike when me or, or, or Pastor Rondi or anybody, for that matter, stands up and tells you when you're going to get a right. disciple. Do you spike? Good. Do you spike when you get pushed to evangelize? Are you all here tonight? I wonder how you spike it. This is so good. Come on, good church management. Do you spike if certain people leave? Does your heart do something? Because after all, if it does, your confidence was in man. And Jeremiah 17 said, curse be the one who put their you, 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 you got a false religion. You got an idolatry issue. I sure hope that if Pastor Gabe ever decided, and it'll never happen, amen, that he was going to succumb uh, to some God-forsaken lifestyle, that you yourself wouldn't. Are y'all listening to me? Do you start giving up because certain people, not just in church, what if mom and them don't want to follow the kingdom way anymore? What if loved ones and family members don't want to do it God's way? Come on, we just came out of the Thanksgiving season. Come on, you are around people who don't believe like you believe. You are around people who had witchy spirits on them. What if they aren't going in the same direction? Do you somehow question whether or not the Bible is right? Because if you are questioning if the word of God is right, you are spiking or flatlining. And you have the potential to succumb to a spirit of witchcraft. Because that's what witchcraft is. Witchcraft is manipulation. Witchcraft is the wickedness, the turning, the twisting of how you once thought you were once a man of blank palate and you had some solid corners to you, but you started just getting a little bent in your theology on that and you started getting a little twisted there and before you know it you don't even look like the same cloth you used to be when you met Jesus because now you're so twisted and we can't unwind you and we got to put you out because you let the heart say defame too long and you didn't tell on yourself uh oh 
You aren't accountable to what you were thinking and feeling. I challenge everybody in this room, if you ever have vile thoughts that continue to reoccur, amen, get with your DP or DP associates or your pastor, and I mean write a list as we have been doing recently, and tell on yourself, and I'm talking about tell the honest truth. Stop telling us you spend too much money during the holidays. I don't want to hear about how you get your hair done too many times a week. Start talking about how you get frustrated when you see pastor's prosperity. Start talking talking about how you get upset because pastor allowed Reggie to preach and didn't pick you. Start talking about how you are vexed by the fact, hallelujah, that the church has paid off, but they didn't give you a raise. Start talking about how you really feel and get what's on the inside. I'm talking tonight. Get it on the outside so you don't pull yourself out of the game. (laughs) Hallelujah. Do I have some help in the room tonight? Start talking about how you're mad because your sister here is a little longer than you. Start talking about how they always said her eyes were prettier than yours because that's witchcraft trying to loose you from the man that God has in store for you. Trying to loose you from the opportunity. Where are you spiking? Come on, take your seat. Ask your neighbor, what's your heart doing? Boy, I hadn't taught in such an anointed Bible study in years. Man, I need to make more decisions. <laughs> Come on, somebody. How many seats were those demons filling up? I got to get the cold out of this church. Hallelujah. I feel a whole new anointing tonight. We need the power. Are y'all listening to me? I said we need the power. We need to be able to get a signal. And if we can't get a signal and the glory is not falling, if like last Sunday you need pastor to coach you into worship, somebody's under some witchcraft. Y'all know how long it took me to get this church where it should have been on Sunday? Y'all, that's witchcraft. You mean to tell me the people who God have blessed, the people who God have healed, the people who God have favor can't find a reason to lift their hands on Sunday morning? Somebody got to go. Somebody's infecting the atmosphere. Somebody's jacking up the church. Somebody's steering us the wrong way. Father, anybody that's got to go, get them out of this space so we can do what you called us to do to another degree. Am I talking right tonight? I'm asking you, what's your, what's your, what's your heart doing? Come on, this is real pastoral tonight. I'm going to keep it sanitized enough so it can go on TV. I'm not calling names, but I'm asking you. You know what I'm talking about. I said, what's your heart doing? Hallelujah. Because that heart, man, under wrong management, it's going to jack something up. Are you all with me? So in what ways are you spiking? The real reason why the heart can get away from us so easily is because many of you in the room are not witchcraft proof. So tonight, we're going to deal with that. We're going to deal with really how to witchcraft proof you. You can take that off the screen, and let's go to John 13 and 2 in the Amplified Version of the Bible, and let's just revisit some things that we've taught down through the years, because this will not be the first time I've taught this. If you're a new member, you may have heard this for the first time tonight, <clears throat> but this is a principle I spent a ton of time on about three years ago and did a whole series out of it over in John 13 and 2. The Bible says it was during supper. It was during supper. It was during a time of festivities when everything should be going well. It was during a time when you were to celebrate your wonderful mortgage burning ceremony. It it, it was during supper when you should be able to relax during the holiday season when everything should be going well for everybody. Whoever said ain't nobody mad but the devil is right. Because it was during supper when the devil had already done what? Put the what? Come on, we're getting into heart management. Put the what? Come on, young people. Put the what? It's on the screen. Put the what? Thought of doing what? The stupidest thing a person could ever do. The thought of betraying Jesus. Do y'all see that? It was during a time when they should just be eating and enjoying and enjoying and enjoying who they have access to that the devil put the thought of betraying Jesus, but It was not just the thought anymore, young people who always wonder whether or not, amen, you have been uh, overtaken by the enemy. Uh, Thoughts are one thing. You you can't stop a bird from flying over your head, but you can stop it from making the nest. But in this case, this thought had leaked into the what? Heart 
of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son. So the thought of betraying Jesus in Judas's case was no longer a thought. And I want you to see the process over Judas's life, how that thought gradually but surely leaked. You remember the woman who came with the alabaster box and wanted to be a blessing to Jesus? <laughs> and uh, Judas had a heart monitor on. And how did he start talking? Why are we giving all this? Why is she wasting all that? Why are we doing this? Guys, when you start questioning the kingdom way, your heart is being tweaked. One more offering? (laughs) You start questioning the kingdom way. Come on, somebody. Your heart is being tweaked. Well, why they got to do this? Why they got to do that? Come on, somebody. You start questioning the kingdom way. What's happening? Your heart is being tweaked. Tweet. That was the process. Amen. And before you know it, there was a moment in Judas's tenure where, quite frankly, the witchcraft had gotten so strong on him, there was only need for one more straw to break the camel's back. And when they came to him with the pieces of silver, he bought into it. Now, understand what's so profound about Judas. By the time he bought into it, sold Jesus out for those few pieces of silver. Amen. When he had betrayed Jesus, he tried to go and give the silver back. But come on, class. By that time, it was too. You better be careful selling Jesus out, because if you sell Jesus out, come on, rich young ruler. He's not going to come back and ask you if you want to be a disciple. Mark 10. He's not going to come back and and check in and see. So if y'all got a little time, little time little time. We're not going to be doing a real, real long altar call tonight, but it's too anointed to cut this message short, y'all. I want you all to understand that your mind is one big control center. Your mind. And uh, we're going to help you understand the real reason why the heart can get away from us so easily. The real reason why. As a lead into these brief three points, I'd like to play a clip Amen. And I want you to pay attention to the control center in this clip. Now, y'all know I'm a kid at heart, so I I like watching movies like Transformers. And uh, when I watch movies like that, I get revelation knowledge uh, while I'm in the theater room. And this movie blessed me real good because you see the kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness. Now, uh, think of the control center that you're about to see as your mind and what's really, really, really going on. But then I want you to notice that these guys that are supposed to be controlling Megatron, uh, because they unleash Megatron and because they unleash their ideas through their mouth, at a certain point, Megatron started taking over. And they were no longer in control of the Megatron, the evil guy in their life. And then you'll see another revelation come through at the end, amen, when Optimus Prime a man gets hurt by multiple forces. Let's see how you take a strong man out. Get the little demons going. Shoot at them. Try this. Try that. And because you don't control your mind, what's the second revelation? Stuff gets out of. We think we're controlling them a little bit. Did y'all hear that? And you look up and you say, how did I get here? And now Optimus is running from a devil that he should have long got up, put his foot down, and fought. Now, you'll have to join me on Sunday, and we'll see (laughs) who really wins that fight. Yeah, we're going to show you how to fight, fight, but we don't have time for everything tonight. But the truth is, Optimus, amen, was busy fighting this devil, fighting uh, Megatron, who is his, his, his major enemy. But uh, here comes this other guy, man. And because he was preoccupied, come on, Jesus, with Satan in the wilderness, sometimes the wild beasts, they hit you by surprise. Whatever you don't regulate will take you out. The missiles came from behind, y'all. Let him who thinks he stands. Now, you know neither one of them guys could beat Optimus head up. In a minute, he was going to beat the other guy down if he had his way with him. But y'all, the devil going to hit you where you're weak. He's going to get in through a fence, 
but he's going to lure you out through by which we're your weak. And what makes this storyline so sad, and this is what I'm not going to allow to happen to this church, who those will allow me to pastor you, there are innocent bystanders that get caught up in the same snare. The same net that got Optimus was the same net that drugged the girl up and drugged the girl out. Every babe in the Lord, every Christian in the Lord, every person in the Lord, y'all listen to your pastor real good. I don't know who will come and who will stay from years to come. I don't know. I hope, I hope everybody governs their heart. I hope everybody heeds the prophetic dreams they get. I hope everybody listens to the word and doesn't fall asleep. I hope everybody stays on track. But listen to me, amen, and my admonishment, I pray that I'm like Paul. I beseech you, my dear brother, by the mercies of God, that you would present your body a living sacrifice. I beseech you that you will never, I don't care who it is, change what you know about Jesus and God in the positive for a person. Never. Now, I hope these guys keep sitting on the front row. I hope everybody keep counting the money they count. I hope the youth leaders keep doing what they're doing. Amen. I hope everybody does what they're supposed to do. And I hope we continue to grow in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ. But if somebody, amen, determines, amen, that witchcraft is stronger than what they want to believe about God and they refuse to self-regulate, amen, don't you go with them. Are you all here tonight? So in my last uh, few and a little bit, and I feel like I have you captive, and I feel like you'll give me a little extra grace tonight. In my last little bit here tonight, I want to give you three ways, amen, three reasons, rather, why, amen, that heart can get away from you so easily. I want to give you those real reasons why the heart can get away from you so easily. The real reasons why the heart can get away from us so easily. I really want to fan that out. Number one, tolerance for wrong thoughts. You put up with it too long. Stop running from the devil and fight. Stop saying, I did make confessions and keep making them. Having done all to stand, stand. Stop saying, I did pray and keep praying. Men are... Always pray. Colossians 4 and 2, devote yourself to prayer. Amen. This type come uh, only by fasting and praying or it didn't come out because of unbelief. Get in belief. Get in fasting and praying if that's what you need to do. Beat your body, as Paul said. Beat your body and bring it under subjection. Come on, somebody. Beat yourself to hear the word instead of Netflix. Amen. Do the things that we tell you to do to maintain your Christianity and your regiment. And don't just do it out of religion. Do it out of relationship. Prayer time, word time. Hear the word. Say the word. Do the word. Stay on it. Don't come off of it. Come to church. Call and confess. Tell on yourself. Confess your faults one to another. Tell somebody about the wrong thinking you've been having. Get it early. I want to teach my lesson too early, but if you don't deal with it now, you're going to deal with it later. And I love this tonight, y'all, because Dave uh, Jr., the Bible really gives us scripture for all of my points, and I want you all to get them all. And this is going to be a classic message that I want you to hear over and over and over again. But over in Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse number 11, amen, and this is so awesome. Let's just use this one verse, tolerance for one, wrong thoughts. The Bible says, amen, uh, uh, because this is why you tolerate the thoughts. The Bible says, because the sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. In other words, because you don't see the results of it right now. See, it's real easy to stay in pornography because you don't see the results of how it's going to taint your marriage life. You can't perform with your wife because you're so jaded by the images you saw in pornography. Are you all with me? Or your husband because it attacks women too. Amen. Because judgment is not executed speedily because you don't see the outside outcomes amen, of what you've been thinking, the Bible says, as a result, you tolerate. Therefore, the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. You set yourself in a certain place because you don't see the, the, the immediate outcomes of it. It doesn't hurt you on the outside yet. It hasn't hurt your money yeah, you know, you could be think about how, thinking about how awful your boss is for two years straight. 
And on one fateful day in the break room, you're going to get tired. A missile going to hit you in the back. And you're just going to let something come out your mouth that's going to color your finances, going to color your letter of recommendation, and going to color your outcomes because you're going to make a dishonorable statement because you forgot who you was talking to. And the sentence against that evil work wasn't executed the day the thought entered. And you entertained it. And you said stuff like, man, I guess I got to go out there again. I'm tired of this. Are you? We didn't hear you when you said it, but you did. Come on, married people. When you're going to influence your spouse the right way. When you're going to tell, I, I sure hope Felicia Carter will tell John Carter, hey, now, babe, you know, you don't need to think like that. Baby, I'm having a moment. I don't know if I want to do this. No, no, no. Wait, wait a minute, baby. I don't know. I like where God is playing at us. You don't need to think like that. We need to meet with pastor. And they, he's got a pure heart, so he's a good man to use as an example of this. But, man, we, you, no, baby, don't. Mm, let's not do that. Who's nudging you? Who puts you back on track? Who keeps you aligned? Come on, somebody. Who helps you tolerate stupid? Some people help you tolerate stupid. You got a gorgeous wife and some brother over there talking about, man, you better get yours. Nah, bro, I'm, I'm good. And you don't know he got his. Hint, hint. When his check is going in four different directions, because all them babies he's taking care of. And misery is not a scripture, but misery still loves company. Stupid loves stupid. I've seen it for far too long. Are y'all with me? Do y'all understand that stupid people flock together? <laughs> Have you ever seen that? I mean, yo, I used to work at a college campus years ago, Jeff, when I first finished graduate school. And do you know everybody who had the same, I was in mental health, everybody who had the same mental health syndrome somehow, some way, found each other? <laughs> All of the depressed people? <laughs> this is so, y'all, feeble-minded anxiety folk. Because people love to talk to people who are of like minds. All the people who thought a tornado or a hurricane was going to come any moment now, they were together in the student union. Because <laughs> we love to group around who's like us. There's a reason why I get along with the people that I get along with in my life. Because we are what you call like-minded. There are a whole lot of pastors out there, but I don't get along with men who cheat on their wives. They would agitate me. I don't get along with guys who got money issues. I don't get along with guys who cuss and fuss. I, I can't get with a pastor that can preach on Sunday and go out for breakfast and let the S word out. That don't go with me. That's the biggest way to get me to not be your friend. Are y'all listening to me? I can get with a pastor, Rondi. Been married 30 plus years. Come on, somebody. Four kids. Come on. I can get with, I can get with some other people, man. Used to get with Pop Ghoul. Same standard, same way of seeing the world, same philosophical viewpoints about the truth of God's word, not vain philosophies, right philosophies. How one should act, how one should be. Are you all listening to me? And so who's pushing you back out of the wrong thoughts? Y'all, tolerance for wrong thoughts. Look at it again, because the sentences against an evil work is not. Y'all still here? Execute it fast. Y'all can see why you'll keep on doing the wrong thing? Because you don't see the, come on, young people, you don't see the fruit of it today. Though people say you're getting by, but you're not getting away. Hallelujah. And sin will keep you longer than you want to stay and take you further than you want to go. And y'all, all sins ain't moral sins. Some things are the sins of not regulating what's going on up here. You got to do the work of that, and you got to stay on it. And the more you punch that devil in the face, the more he's going to realize he can't get you. Somebody say amen. amen. All right? Number two, a total misunderstanding of the default setting of the heart. Y'all know what the default setting is? Come on, don't make it too, 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 too huge. Default means what, what you would be like with no enhancements. Default is when you buy the, 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 the we used to have Microsoft Office 
uh, and I know it's still out there today, but uh, when you buy your computer, come on, you get that IBM, and what was it? They, they, they'd send it to its default setting before you uploaded all its programs. Well, before you upload the Holy Ghost, before you upload the Word of God, before you upload right teaching and right preaching, the default setting of your unrenewed heart is wicked. The heart of a man is desperately wicked. Jeremiah 17, who can know it? Who can navigate? Who can even understand it? Who can understand why a college student would not take his or her parents up on an offer to just be right and I'll pay for everything? You don't have to like me tonight. I'm still going to teach it. Who can understand that? Who could understand why a lady who has it made, wonderful homemaker, living in a beautiful home, got everything that one could desire plus more, would get online and start conversating with their uh, uh, friend that they met in third grade because they always liked them. (laughs) You weren't even developed in third grade. We don't even look the way we looked in third grade. Are you all with me? You didn't even have hips in third grade. That's so backwards. I always knew you were the one for me. Somebody say amen. Amen. And then you meet up with them and they got summer teeth. (laughs) Because you just had to reconnect with the person you knew back from Pennsylvania. Some are there and some are not. I'm not making fun of anybody. Somebody say amen. I said somebody say amen. How you get over there and jack up your marriage and jack up with you. the misunderstanding of the default uh, of the default setting of the heart. You're not regulating what your heart would be without the word of God, what your heart would be without the Holy Ghost, what your heart would be without wise counsel. That's why you need to sign up for life groups that you don't even need. I'm not sick in my body. I just want somewhere to go on Wednesday. <laughs> so I signed up for the healing group. Come on, somebody say amen. You just need to stay around the word of God. When your mind starts getting twisted and going in different directions, you need to say, can we have one more men's group per month? Can we just, can the ladies go bowling? (laughs) Somebody say amen. Man, I get renewed in my mind off of the pre-bowling devotional (laughs) before we even throw the ball. Just read Ephesians 4 and 23. Be renewed in spirit of mind. Got it. Delivered. Let's vote. I just need to be around the saints tonight. I don't care what y'all read. I need to be around the things of God. Somebody say amen. Pastor, will you unlock the doors of the church so I can come to the prayer bench and just pray until I start thinking right? You ever thought about that? Can I just come to the church and pray until I get my mind right? Because we do got authority over the devil. I said we do got authority over the devil. I wish I had help tonight. What is that default coming from? Let's learn from Solomon. Look at another Ecclesiastes passage. Y'all, I'm getting ready to close. You've been kind tonight. Just two more points. I'm closing. Ecclesiastes 9 and 3. The Bible says, this this is so awesome. It it says, this is an evil. (laughs) I love the way Solomon talks. He said, this is an evil in all that is done under the sun. That one thing happens to all, and I love this, default setting. Truly the heart's of the sons of men and your human nature are full of evil. And I love the Bible, y'all. Madness is in Deuteronomy 28. It's under the curse. Listen to what, he, what Solomon says about it. He says, your heart as a default setting is what of evil? For, y'all, every word in Scripture matters. This is New King James Version. This is no major translation of the Bible. This is basically how Scripture is written here. The Bible not only says your default setting is evil, He says, your default setting is full of evil. Somebody say amen. And then he says, madness is in their hearts while they live. And after they go to the dead. That's dealing with human nature. Full of what? Evil. You know what you are without the renewing of your mind? Evil. And watch this. Going to jack up your theology. Even as a born again Christian. That's why you need to be saved from yourself. Deliver me from this body of death. Romans 7 and 
24. Deliver me from this carnal thinking. To be carnally minded is death. Who's he talking to, family? Christians. The church at Rome. He's not talking to the world. He's talking to the church. Deliver me from this mind of death, this carnality mind. Are y'all still here? I'm closing. You've been gracious tonight, but I want to put this in the bookstore because if anybody in this church ever starts having heart issues, this is your word right here. Romans 1 and 21, because although they knew God, somebody say, come on, they knew God. Say it again. They knew God. I wonder how many people in here know God. Although they knew God, they did not what? Glorify him as God. This is why you get a dark heart. Nor were they thankful. When you move into ungratefulness, when you assume that this is just the way it should be and you start taking things for granted, that's the easiest way to lose it. You're not appreciating it anymore. Because they weren't thankful, but became, watch this, y'all, futile. Where, class? In their thoughts, and I love it. When they became futile in their thoughts and did not regulate their thoughts, their foolish hearts over time were darkened. You didn't regulate the default setting of your heart. I hope y'all are listening to me tonight. This applies to every Christian in this room. I'm looking at people out there that's so blessed of the Lord. I, I get blessed by talking to so, so many of you. and uh, Amen. So many of you who are even blessed to be paid employees of, of mine. My God, you know, I look at a Sister Maria who is living her dream literally right now. Amen. Uh, uh, without going into all of the employment terms of her contract, but has just moved into a flavorsome situation over there with the Grace House and, and the campus and, and all this kind of stuff that the Lord has just done. And I'm glad to have her. You know, I, I, I believe it, and I see her sitting in the back tonight. But man, I sure hope there's never a day where Maria has the epiphany, amen, that this ain't good enough. I believe she will, because she's been that way. But I sure hope she'll stay thankful and not let her mind darken her heart. Because to whom much is given, much is required. Y'all, I'm closing, and the minute you get to the top, it gets tougher. Because you become a bigger target. Who's it best to knock out? Come on, Satan. I'm not only leaving heaven, I'm going to take a third with me. And I want you to know tonight, if you one of the stupid ones, y'all, we, I'm going to preach this. We talk about the devil leaving heaven. Who are the dummies that said, oh, I'll go too? <laughs> That'd be great. You going to hell and I'd like to see what that's like. A third left God? <laughs> Come on, fallen angels. Is that ignoramus? So, y'all, I'm not tolerant for that stuff. I'm not putting up with it. I'm not, y'all, I don't feel bad for you. If you turn your back on God, go now. Come on, somebody. In my age, we used to say, poof, be gone. <laughs> go ahead now. Because, <laughs> y'all, we're doing the work for the Lord over here, though. Hallelujah. We on the wall. We can't come down right now. We got our shovel in one hand and sword in the other. We building for Jesus. We going in the name of the Lord. Somebody say amen. And we just can't tolerate witchcraft in the camp. Somebody say amen. amen. Last but not least, and I close with this. What is the thing? Amen. What is the thing? What is the thing? Amen. That makes your heart get so easily away from you. Last but not least tonight, the perfect storm. The perfect storm. And I close with this. They'll put it on the screen, Mark 1, 13. But giving a man, or rather being inundated with multiple stressors at the same time. Guys, I'm going to tell you right now how the devil will get you if he does. And you'll remember Pastor Rogers told you. He going to make your boyfriend break up with you. Your mama scrutinize you for worshiping at a church. She going to start calling the church a cult. You're going to be a little stressed out on the job because they want your productivity to go up. One of your kids is going to be having a hard time academically. You're going to have this going on potentially in your health. 
Lots of missiles. When did Optimus Prime go down? When he was fighting this way. And the missile came that way. That dude couldn't beat him head on. But what was that? And he was there, Mark 1.13, in the wilderness 40 days. Tempted by Satan. Stuff constantly coming through his mind. And was with the what? What was he with? So I got to deal with Satan, lions, tigers, and bears. And guys, please understand, Bible literally speaking, if Jesus is amongst wild beasts, come on, don't forget this revelation. This is not post-trib, man. This, this is not millennial reign. This is not when a lamb is laying down with a lion. This is a time and space to where the wild beasts are bloodthirsty. These are fallen animals. So Jesus is fighting the devil, but he still got to keep some thought processes about the wild beasts that's around him. We don't want to stretch the theology of the scripture, but the Bible does say that there were some other at least movements going on in that wilderness. And when the enemy comes after you, bottom line, y'all, he is going to create a perfect storm. He going to hit you when you're tired. He going to hit you when you are most susceptible to releasing something out of your mouth that you can't get back. That's all witchcraft is. The manifestation of demonic influence that makes you say something that you can't get back and puts creative power on it. Are y'all here tonight? Don't fall prey to it. All that I've taught you tonight is about soul heart regulation. I close with this. All that I've, I've given you tonight is all about you monitoring your spikes. What are your blood levels? Well, what is your, what is your enzyme level? You know, uh, that, that's, all, that's really all the medical community does. They, they, you know, they can't just cut you open and, and, and get a glimpse of stuff. So what do they do? They take an x-ray. That's how the orthopedic guys and gals know if you got a chip bone. All right? We got to send you through a machine. Got to do an AC. Uh, look at those MCL, ACL stuff to know if you tore a ligament. We, you know, whether or not you can ever play football again. Do you have a ligament? Man, we got to do a scan of your body. Come on, even Dennis. Come on, Shayla, they ever, they ever showed you your skeleton and your jaw and, and you could tell if you got a cavity because that one area is real dark. It's real fuzzy. All the other teeth look pure white and healthy and that good dentist, he'll show you now right here. You see that? That's where that infection is seeping in. That's where we're going to root canal you. We're going to get that one out of there. Are y'all listening to this? Everything is about imaging. Everything is about an inward look. I challenge our church tonight. This has been good family talk to take a pure image mm -hmm. of what's on the inside. Yeah. I want you to do that. I want you to monitor those hearts. I don't want you to tolerate wrong thoughts for one minute. Just because a wrong thought came doesn't mean it's your thought. But still don't put up with it. Acknowledge it for what it is, catch it, cast it down, and what are we gonna do? How are we gonna consume it? With the word of God. If you're writing, write this down. Never fight a thought with a thought. Never fight a thought with a thought. You fight a thought with the word. You don't fight a thought with just, I can be a better person. That's not the Bible. You fight that thought that you're worthless. That thought comes and says you're worthless. You fight that with, I can do all things through Christ. That strengthens me. You don't just fight it with positive uh, uh, thinking. Are you all with me? They used to call it mental ascent. You don't just mental ascend above something. You fight it with the word of God. Amen. Candace, that devil start telling you something. It ain't going to happen. This is not going to be what it's going to be. You come back with the scriptural confession appropriate for that thought. And you do it. And listen, you do it over much. I told one of my good members earlier this week, I sent them a list of confessions, and I said, I tell you what we're going to do today, we're going to get on the offense instead of the defense. We're going to confess on the front end. We're not going to wait until the thoughts start cooking up. We're going to get ahead. Are you all in here? Prevention is still better than a cure. Is this good tonight? I want to get ahead of that double. If I know, and guys, come on, KCC, didn't I tell you, this is a didn't I tell you moment. Didn't I say to y'all about two months ago, a month ago, I said, now listen, church, we just paid the church off. 
you know the devil is going to retaliate. Who was in that service? So now I'm going to use a strong word. I never like to say shame to Christians because I, I, I believe shame is all but speaking a curse to somebody. But the Bible says we will not be put to shame. But I'm going to tell you this tonight. Shame on you if you succumb to witchcraft. It's a shame. There are some things that are a shame. I don't use that word often. But it is a shame if you know the devil. Guys, understand witchcraft. I got to do more on this. Meet me on Sunday. Understand, it's going to come in through a fence. But also understand this. It's going to always try you. And particularly after you get a great victory. Because the devil is mad. Are y'all here tonight? When, when was Elijah depressed? After he started calling fire down. He done beat the witch. Now you done burned up all these people and a little woman got you running. He under the juniper tree talking about why am I even alive? And God said, what are you doing under this tree? Go and read it. God said, what you doing? What you doing, man? When is he going to try your emotions? After a great, y'all, you on track, you inches away. That's when he's coming. We got to get better at witchcraft because witchcraft is a real force. He's giving you powers over all the powers. I feel like y'all are with me tonight. Over all the what? Powers of the enemy. All right? Devil's got power, but you got power over it. And a big part of your power is all about self-regulation. That's enough for tonight. I want to thank y'all for giving me a little extra time. I gave you a Sunday morning message on a Thursday night. But sometimes you got to do what you got to do. Are you all here tonight? Amen. As a man looking in the water, so is a man the mirror of his heart. The heart tells me where you really are. As we all stand, we're not bad. I think God wants to just minister tonight as we all stand. I'll tell you what I want to do tonight, and I want to be real strategic. And I know you gave me grace tonight, and I thank you for that. But I want to invite you down, first things first, if you're not saved. You don't know Jesus, I want you to come on down. Be born again. I, 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 that's the first place I got to change my heart, okay? I really want to do that, okay? really want to do that. Sunday, we gave you an assignment, not even knowing how prophetic we were. We told you, write down your Achilles heel. That's an a, a, a idea about the soft spot in your body. That's why they use that euphemism, those areas where you struggle. Those areas where the enemy comes in after you. You'll never be this. You'll never have that. You know, the devil will try to tempt you that you are sexually confused. Will he not? He'll try to tell you, you know, your identity is not this. Your identity is not that. I, I, I'm going to do it one day, y'all. I, I did the truth about homosexuality years ago. But, guys, sometimes, man, it, just in love and in grace, do you understand that, yes, homosexuality and any other perverted spirit really is a demon you cast out? But can I give you a news flash? Homosexuality, just like fornication, just like alcoholism, just like any other spirit, is something that a person who used to be that has to now self-regulate in. So if you got delivered from perversion, you know what you got to do? You got to regulate that, no, I'm not that anymore. You don't keep casting a homosexual demon out. You don't let it back in. And then you self-regulate. You are a whoremonger, you get rid of the spirit, cast it out, but then you lock the door. You can't get back in me, man. Uh-uh. I used to be that. And this is going to bless somebody real good. The longer you keep it out, the more used to, you, used to being delivered you will become. Guys, I've been delivered so long, there are things in my life I will never do again. And I want you to know, because this is going to give somebody hope. There is a such thing as not even wanting to do it. Like I have no desire to do certain things. Zero. Every appetite in my life, the Lord satisfies it through something that is right. So I don't want to be a womanizer because I don't want multiple women. The Lord satisfies that through one wife. 
I don't want to be shysty in money because I don't have no need to be. Because anything I would get by being shysty, I could just get by being right. So why would I be shysty to get it? Just pay for it the right way with your money if that's what you really want. Are y'all getting this? You never have to do anything outside the plan of God because Satan can only get you to do stuff that he borrowed from God. He gives you perverted stuff. God gave you a wife. Satan gives you porno. Y'all, the real thing? Come on, guys. He gives you money laundering and embezzlement. God gives you eight figures a year and multiple contracts. Which one you want? So all you got to do is regulate into the kingdom method. And if you do that, you're going to be highly successful. I want to pray for some people tonight. You're already born again, but you'll be honest about some thought regulation you need to do. If that's you tonight and you say, Pastor, yes, yes, this is where you get to be honest. Boy, witchcraft has tried to push up on me in certain quadrants and areas for whatever reason. Amen. And I don't have to know all the reasons tonight. In fact, we're out of time, so I won't know all the reasons. Amen. When we called out doubt on Sunday, do you know what doubt is there to do? Get you to quit. Y'all, y'all, y'all need to start recognizing the end game. Always say to yourself about a thought, what's it there for? It came for a reason. Boy, you wake up one Sunday and you start thinking, man, I, I, you know, I think I need to start exploring other churches. Whoa, where'd that thought come from? And why? What's it trying to do? Are y'all listening to me? Brothers, you go to the bank to deposit your money and young lady, amen, is showing all, all kinds of cleavage. What's, what's that cleavage for? Why do people show cleavage? Because there are plenty of garbs they could wear that don't. It's got to be for a, a reason. Now, remember, Satan only perverts what God makes right. There are young people in the room, but if you read your Bible, and particularly Proverbs chapter 5 and the Song of Solomon, a woman's extremities are for a reason. They are there to ignite a fire in her husband and for other purposes, like baby nourishment, all, right? That's what's right about it. But the world told you if it ain't tight, it ain't right. And you need to show a little skin. But let me ask you something, girls. Why? Why you got to show a little skin? Come on, urban modern preachers. Why, why preach in a muscle shirt? What's it doing to a babe in the Lord that's already having a hard time? Y'all ain't saying nothing. That's already in awe of you. And you are the direct protege of what they, are, they want their husband to be like. And you're just going to make it worse? Won't you show them what a pure man looks like? So when they meet their husband, they'll meet somebody just like you. <laughs> but you won't, would not have picked the flower in your congregation. You know, flowers are pretty, but don't pick them. Are y'all listening to me? Am I helping anybody tonight? So where do you need to regulate? Come on, who's going to be honest? What, 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 what's the real thought? You know, don't send no more confessions in. I shop too much. I, I'm just tired of overspending. Is that your real problem? Come on, come on, come on. Now I want to know who you're texting. I want to know who you're letting in. I want to know who's flirting with you on the job. Who you have uh, longer than usual conversations with. Because you are enticed by their voice and their sensuality and their enjoyment. And somehow, some way, when you are working in your cubicle, uh, she, she makes her way just to give one more rub across your shoulder. And, and, and her fingers are just so melodious on your skin what you about to be ensnared with because it's not just about leaving the church it's about leaving God I've seen it happen too many times in pastoring y'all and I know some of these guys if I be honest is is here because of some of the transitions our ministry is in and thank God for that and that hey that puts emphasis on it but guys don't don't even miss the trees for the forest this is a Christian discipline this is a lifestyle this is something you got to do as a daily regimen. And the more you do it, the better you're going to get at it. There's some things, Brittany, I don't even get tempted to do. It's not in, it's not, it's just it's not there. I don't get tempted to do it. I'm not, 
I'm not almost there. Some of that, I'm not a babe in the Lord. Some of that is, quite frankly, though, I've just practiced over time. I, I'm not interested. I'm not interested in that. You know, I'm one of those guys, Melissa, I'm real attuned to pain aversion. That's me. I don't like it when it hurts. I, I don't. I don't like pain. Anybody in here like me? Kind of pain just does. Some of y'all got a better pain, pain threshold. So you keep doing the same foolish things over and over again. But I'm the type of guy, you know, uh, I passed a turtle the other day going into my home and I didn't pick them up because I got the revelation that some of them are snappers. <laughs> and they look real calm and cool. But if you pick them up too close to their neck, they're very elastic. <laughs> Pow! <laughs> they shock you. Yeah, look kind of cute, don't they? <laughs> so you pick one up and wake up the next day and you got a rash on your cheek and <laughs> boy, what in the world is that? I, all I did is touch one. Oh, that turtle. I, re I do remember rubbing my face. Yeah, right? So I, I don't do stuff I don't understand. Are you listening to me? And that's what we're going to pray out right now. Let's get rid of some thoughts. I make you laugh a little bit, but I'm very serious. What's the thought? Can you do some self-deliverance? Come on, lift your hands by faith. Some of you probably just need to start breathing in and out by faith, believing God that demonic spirits are getting up off of you in the name of Jesus. Come on, let's, let's just put ourselves in that space. Come on, we got on the whole armor. We already did that earlier. But what's the thought? 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 Now, you got to fill in the thought, but I'm going to leave you, lead you through corporate deliverance. Say it with me, in the name of Jesus, I renounce every perverted and demonic thought concerning you fill in the blank. Go ahead. Do your work. Do your business. Come on. Come on. Fear, dark, doubt, anxiety. Now, don't stay safe. Sexual perversion. Come on. Come on. Jealousy. Come on. It's in the room covetousness, wrong thinking, wrong thinking. I renounce it. Come on, let's do it. Let's do the work. Let's do the work. Let's do the work. Let's do the work in the name of Jesus. I renounce it. I give it up. I don't need it. I don't want it. I don't want it. I don't want it. I'm not going back to perversion. I don't want it. Doubt. Come on. I'll give no more thought to hurt, to hurt, to hurt. I will not be in pain any longer. I renounce that in the name of Jesus. I give it up. I don't need it. I don't need it. Create in me a clean heart. Now, come on, let's finish it off. Let's go through deliverance. Say it. Create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within. Wash me and I shall be clean. I decree in the name of Jesus. As of tonight, my soul is whiter than snow. Purge me with hyssop. Cleanse me with the blood of Jesus. Now, right now, start to see red. Gallons of the blood of Jesus over that thought. I want you to do it. That's how you image it. That's how you image it. Come on, put an image on it, an imagination on it. I see gallons of the blood rinsing it out. Rinsing. See it falling out in the name, in the name of Jesus. Fear and doubt. Hurt and pain. Come on, some of you was hurt recently. Amen. Amen. Hurt and pain. Renounce it. Renounce it. Renounce it in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank, come on. Come on. You got to open up your mouth. I release that tonight. I release that tonight. I release that tonight. I'm not going back to that tonight. I'm not going. I'm finished with it. I'm over it. I'm over it. I'm over it. I'm over it in the name of Jesus. I'm over it. I'm not, I don't want to be that guy. I don't want to be that girl. I'm finished with it. I renounce it in the name of Jesus. Every satanic and wicked thought. Now, come on, make a confession. And he who the sun sets free. Now, this time, say it boldly. He who the sun sets free. He who the sun sets free. I'm who the sun sets free. I am free. And I'm free indeed. In the name of Jesus. Come on, Carter. Father, in the name of Jesus, I bind every wicked stronghold. Satan, take your hands off of her mind. I'm led to pray for you tonight. In the name of Jesus, every tainted thought, every thought that's not of God. In the yes, the past. In the name of Jesus, Thank we take authority over it. We're not going back. We're moving forward. We're standing strong in Jesus' name. 
We can do all things through Christ that strengthens us. In the name of Jesus. Witchcraft, you can't have her. You can't have anybody in this church. I command you to go in Jesus' name. Come on, receive that by faith. Come on, receive that by faith all over the room. Come on, let the Lord work with you tonight. Receive that by faith. In the name of Jesus. Wickedness and perversion. Go, 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 go. Come on, flow with me for a little bit tonight. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. In the name of Jesus. I don't want to be this way. Hallelujah. I don't want to be this way. You don't have to. I don't want to be this way. You don't have to. I don't want to be this way. You don't have to. I don't want to be this way. You don't have to. Father, I hear him crying from his heart tonight. God, in the name of Jesus, we take authority over those wicked strongholds, every satanic spirit of perversion. In the name of Jesus, I command you to go. Hurt and pain, I rinse you out with the blood of Jesus. This man will not fall off the cliff. In the name of Jesus, he will not slip away. He will not fade away. In the name of Jesus, he's strong in the Lord. And in the power of his might. Satan, go from him now. Oppressive spirits, loose him and let him go in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I don't want to be this way. You don't have to, brother. God loves you. Thank you, Lord. Come on, begin to love him tonight. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now I want to pray for healing of the soul. Some of you were, were hurt for obvious reasons tonight. Thank you, Lord. If you've been battling through the hurt and pain, even of betrayal, hurt and pain, of relationships gone awry, and you know what I'm talking about, raise your hands a little higher right there. Raise your hands a little higher right there. If you had a little bit of that, I just can't believe this. Oh, my God, I must be dreaming. Raise your hand a little higher right there. Father, in the name of Jesus, we administer an ointment in this atmosphere. In the name of Jesus, much like the balm of Gilead, an anointed ointment, God, for recovery over every person that was bruised and hurt by another person's wrong decision. In the name of Jesus, we plead the blood of Jesus over this ministry. I, as a shepherd, plead the blood of Jesus over the people of God. And I decree that there will be no falling away. I decree, hallelujah, that there is a supernatural anointing for resilience in the name of Jesus. That you are all, look at it coming on you. You are strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. That you are a mighty soldier for Jesus. Father, I decree, amen, a human replacement better, ten times better than what they had before. It always happening in the name of Jesus. Relationships better. Discipleship partners better than what I had before. Come on, believe you receive it by faith. Come on, armor bearers and assistants better, better, better. Stronger men, anointed women of God walking the saints through. Now, right now, come on. I want you to hear something that God gave me, and I want you to decree it by faith. I'll give no more thought. No, you got to say it with boldness. I'll give no more thought to this matter. Now praise him like you're free. I'll give no more thought. No more, no more, no more. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, no, give it to him like you just got delivered. I'll give no more thought. No more. There it is. Look at the people of God. There it is. Woo! Woo! Come on, if you got a heavenly language, pray in the Holy Ghost. Build yourself up. Let that, let that freedom, that organic Holy Ghost, just flow through your body now. Oh, thank you, Lord. I'm strengthening my inward man. Yes, sir. I'm strengthened. I'm better. I'm better. I'm better tonight. I'm healed. I'm healed. I'm healed. I'll give no more thought to this matter. No man, no man, no man, no man. Put his hand in the plow, looking back. It's fit, it's fit, it's fit, it's fit, it's fit. No more sleepless nights. No more waking up at 12 midnight, 2 in the morning, wondering why, if, what. Free indeed! Free indeed. Free indeed in the name of Jesus. Free indeed in the name of Jesus. Every stronghold broken in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Free indeed. Oh, hallelujah. Woo! I'm free indeed. Thank you, Lord. Come on, come on, come on. We're a spirit-filled church. We're not afraid to talk in tongues. We're a spirit-filled church. We're going higher. We're going better. Ten times better. Decree it right now. Ten times better. Come on. Ten times better. Ten times better. 
Ten times better. Say it with boldness. Ten times better. 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 Glory. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Your blood makes me worthy of all these blessings. Give me a clean heart. Say, and I'll follow you. Come on, let's say that one time as an organized body. Say, give me a clean heart. Clean heart, say, so I may serve. So, say, Lord, fix my soul that I may be used. Used by thee, your blood. Give him a wave offering of all these blessings. Hey, sing, say, give me a clean heart. Give me a clean heart. Give me a clean heart. Say, give me a clean last time. Heart and I, and I'll follow you. Hallelujah. Come on, come on. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Lord, I love you, Lord, I love you. Come on, let me hear you tonight, Lord, I love you, Lord, I love you. Oh, hallelujah, I break the power of darkness in the name of Jesus. Take your hands off of my daughter, loose her, and let her go in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, head and not the tail, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Head and not the tail. Oh, come on and worship him. I want to hear the sound of worship. Come on and worship him. Hallelujah. Yeah. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. I adore you, yeah, yeah. I adore you, yeah, yeah. Hey, oh. Give me some oil. Give me some oil. It's under the bench. Give me some oil. Hey, the glory is thick in here. Come here, Pam. Come here, Pam. Come here, Pam. Come on, hallelujah. Oh, hey. Jesus laid hands on a blind man. He saw men as trees. We prayed for you before. I increase your faith, and I pray for you again. Psalm 107 and 9, he satisfies the parched throat. I call your esophagus, your eternal organs, healed in Jesus' name. I command your voice to come back in full strength in the name of Jesus. Loose her and let her go, you devil. By the stripes of Jesus, you're healed. Same power, raise Jesus from the dead. Quickens, quickens your mortal body. In Jesus' name. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Oh, 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 come on, come on, come on. It's time to press in now. Oh, it's time to press in now. Lift your hands. Hallelujah. 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 You demonic spirit of oppression. Loose him and let him go in the name of Jesus. Go from him now. Oh. 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 Thank you, Lord. 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 I love you, saith the Lord. Oh, I love you, saith the Lord. You're loved by God. You're loved by God. You're loved by God. Renewed in the spirit of your mind. Free indeed. There it is. Deliverance is happening right there. Every stronghold of relationships of the past 
We break it now in the name of Jesus. Looser, devil. Oh, look at the power of God. Come on a person. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. 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 Looser and let her go, devil. Go from her now in the name of Jesus. Take your hands off. Thank you, Lord. Every spirit of perversion, get out of this place. Oh, hallelujah. How not a bo 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 shake out. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Michelle, 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 bring her here now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on, stay in the spirit. Oh, la ba 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 shake it. Throw your hands in the air. You demonic devil of the past, witchcraft, stronghold, in the name of Jesus. We break the power of darkness. Come off of her now in the name of Jesus, you devil. Loose her and let her go forever, forever. He who the sun sets free is free indeed. With the voice of authority, every demonic stronghold of the bloodline, go in Jesus' name. Headiness, witchiness, loose in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Say in the spirit. Say in the spirit. Thank you, Lord. Say in the spirit. Thank you, Lord. Stay in the spirit. Be led by God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on, throw your hands in there. You're going to make it. You're going to make it. Covering and protection. To whom much is given, much is required. In the name of Jesus. Self-regulation skills. A greater anointing to keep the devil out. Lose him and let him go in the name of Jesus. Don't go from him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Every stronghold. There's power in this room tonight. There's power in this room tonight. There's power in this room tonight. Oh, la, ba, 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 shaka. Thank you, Lord. Come on, Pam, come. Come on. If you're receiving, God will bless you. Throw your hands in the air. You're not going back. No, no, no. I saw the update. Never, never, never. Free and free indeed. You are usable by God. You are going to do great things for the king. It's not over. KCC is your second chance. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. In the name of Jesus. And we call you free and free indeed. I saw the update. Free indeed. Free indeed. Look at the power coming. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In every diabolical stronghold of yesteryear, the yoke is destroyed because of the anointing. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Come on and worship him. We're going home. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Begin to confess who you are in God. Thank you, Lord. Come on and worship him. I won't give up. I won't give up. I won't give up. I won't give up. I won't. Where you at? Come on. I won't give up. Come on. Come on. Come on. I won't. I won't. I won't quit. I won't stop. I've come too far. I've come too far. Can't give up now. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Same word. Your glory greater, greater, ladder greater than the former. Jesus. Thank you. Oh, look at God. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Put it right there. Thank you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Say in the spirit, flow with the spirit of God. Oh, da, ba, 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 ba. Say it. I'm not going back. Not going back. Not going back. That's the word right there. Not going back. Thank you, Lord. 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 My dear sister, Father, I thank you for her. She's got such a meek heart to her. Lord, give her what she needs to be a solid Christian in you. In the name of Jesus. Love her even the more. She's got a sweet spirit. Help her, God. Guide her in that. In the name of Jesus. Devil, you can't have her. Thank you, Lord. She's a gift to the kingdom. Yes. 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 In every demonic stronghold, I command you to loose your hold off of this precious young lady. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there it is. It's happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I say like Jesus. Yeah, deliverance is coming on you. I don't know you, but God's doing something in you. Thank you, Lord. Woman, thou art loosed. Oh, glory. Oh, Jesus. Now that's freedom right there. Oh, glory. Oh, Jesus. There's an anointing on that. Anointing, anointing, anointing. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, so precious. So sincere. 
this is what sincerity looks like. I just want to do the will of God. I don't know everything. But Lord, if you can use anybody, you can use me. That's been your prayer. Father, help her. Oh, Jesus. Help her. Help her. Help her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Help her. Help her. Baby, be okay. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. And we release the care. The care. The care. Yeah. There it is. It's okay. Yeah. Let it come through. Let it come through. We release the care of life. We release the care of life. Yeah, I don't have to carry it. Cast your care on the Lord, for he cares for you. He cares for you. You've come too far. Too far. Too far. We, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Free, yeah. yeah. Freedom and deliverance. Freedom and deliverance, yeah. Now, devil, loose her and let her go in Jesus' name. Come out of her now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's all out, girl. It's all out. Now, watch this. Watch this. Peace. Yeah. Yeah. Peace. Be still. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. No more blood curling screeches. That devil's gone. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's the alabaster woman right there. Yeah. That's what she looks like in the, in the here and now. And you keep following God, and your name will be known just like hers was. And years to come. Thank you, Lord. I've been praying for alabaster ladies tonight. I don't know what that means. Thank you, Lord. I believe God's taking some people out of the, 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 the junkyard, the dung heap. Thank you, Lord. I don't got to die like my relatives. I don't got to go out like my friends. Thank you, Lord. I don't got to be like everybody else. Amen. It's not my, that's not my path in life. That don't belong to me. Thank you, Lord. Are you all listening to me? See, you got to learn how to be, what is, what is the right word I, I'm looking for? It might be exclusive, but uh, really how to not be a loner, but be outstanding. There's everybody else, but then there's you. <laughs> Perfect example. During COVID, there was everybody else. But then there was us. There, there, there was us over here shaking hands and worshiping and restoring taste to people. There's everybody else, then there's us. But what's the reward of that? On the back end of that, God makes you debt free. See, harvest comes off of obeying God at a later date. Come on, Gabby. And some of you are travailing through pain and hurt tonight but you sow in tears, but you reap. And y'all pray for your pastor. I'm a shepherd tonight, and I'm helping some of you work through some hurt on some stuff. But it is real hard for me to get there these days. And I'm telling you that because there is no earthly reason to taste of the heavenly gift and miss out on the reward. Are you, is that right, Pam? If you're in the room and you're going all the way with God, you're going to be the last man standing. Throw your hands in the air while I pray for this last soldier in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you right now. She's a daughter. You even gave her the same name as me. And now, Lord, I just put all kind of healing ointment on the inside in the name of Jesus. I call out every ripple of the heart. I, I take an anointed iron and I iron out the soul. And I decree, this is anointed right here. Peace be still to every storm. Yep, 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 yep. I felt the anointing go in you right there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Brighter days ahead. Peace be still. Uh -huh. There you go. Why you at it? Be filled with the Holy Ghost. That's what's happening. Oh, da, ba, 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 ba. There you go. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. 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 All over the room. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, let's take that skill set Pop gave us. Just begin to say, praise you, Lord. Oh, come on, church. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, give me some randoms. Thank you, Lord. Where, where's that Thanksgiving gift Pastor Gould gave us a year ago? Come on. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Come on and fortify. Get, get rid of the facade. 
the vanity. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So I'm healed in Jesus' name. No more sickness. Sometimes you can be sick in your soul. No more pain. Tell pain bye-bye. By his stripes we can all proclaim. Proclaim, I'm healed in Jesus, in his name. And by faith, I touch Jesus. Lift your hands and receive that tonight. By faith, I touch Jesus. And by faith. Hand me that microphone. I touch Jesus Christ. Hey, oh, the glory is here tonight. I, come on. Touch Jesus by faith. I, oh, look at the glory fall. Touch Jesus. And by faith. He touched me back. Now signs and wonders. Oh, say it, church. Oh, signs and wonders. Come on, Kendra. Oh, signs and wonders are mine. Oh, look at the power of God ministering healing to you. Oh, signs. There you go. Throw your hands in the air. And wonders. One word. Killed in Jesus' name. There it is. She got it right there. Oh, signs. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Wonder. Yeah. Help her, Carter. Yeah. And by faith. Yeah, it's okay. Thank you, Lord. He taught. <laughs> hey. Me back loose in Jesus' name. Let it go. God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Say right there in the glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So thank you, Lord. Say. Thank you, Lord. Look at the glory falling. Look at it. Look at it. Look at it. Thank you, Lord. I got healed through Thanksgiving now. Hey. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on, take it, take it, take it. Take it. I don't care that it's 920. Take it, take it, take it, take it, take it. Come on. Take it, take it, take it, take it, take it. Take it, take it, take it. Thank you, Lord. Take it, take it, take it. Take it, take it, take it. Thank you, Lord. Take it, take it, take it, take it. Where's my help? Thank you, Lord. Where's my help? I'm healed. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm healed, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally healed. Yeah, yeah. Rest in me, I hear the Lord saying. Rest, 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 rest. Thank you, Lord. Say, I'm healed. Let the Spirit of God do what it's doing. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm healed. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on, it's working on you. Power of God's working on people tonight. Thank you, Lord. Come on, Carter. Power of God's working on people tonight. Power of God's working on you tonight. You got to learn how to stand alone. I I'm being evocative tonight. If mama don't want to go, if little sis don't want to go, you be the one that makes it in the kingdom. In the name of You got it? In the name of Jesus. You be the one that makes it in the kingdom. I'll make it. Yeah, yeah. Healed right there. Come on, come on. Jesus. Thank you. I'll make it. I want you to say that. Prophesy that. Say, I'll make it. Yeah. Oh, I'll make it. Candace, not going back, girl. Come on. I'll make it. Thank you. Mom, I feel led to tell you it's up ahead. 
Thank you, Lord. Spirit of God wants to tell you that while I'm under the anointing. Amen. Don't stop. I know you're not. I know you, don't, you weren't about to stop, but it's up ahead. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, God, I wish you all could just get in God. He doesn't cheat, so he doesn't always show you. But if you could just get a glimpse on what's behind door number two. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. If you could get a glimpse, yes, it, it, it's Christmas time. And, and just to peel the wrapping paper back a little bit to know what's getting ready to come into my possession. Oh, you wouldn't be so occupied by the current circumstance. You'd be thanking, dancing, leaping, and praising God. Because you know that the glory of the latter house, come on, Carter, is greater than the former. I want to see a church full of people giving them praise, giving glory. Hey, yeah, yeah. Woo. Thank you, Lord. No, praise him like you know it's up ahead. It's up ahead. I can't quit now. I can't. I can't. I can't. You can quit if you want to. I can't quit now. I can't quit now. I can't quit now. I can't quit now. Hey, hey, hey. Woo! Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Stir yourself up. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Yet to come, yet to come, yet to come. It's up ahead. It's up ahead. Somebody taking that by faith. Sorry, the Lord told me to anoint you. Come on, let me anoint you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I feel like Elijah. Thank you, Lord. In the days of the prophet, go and anoint Jehu. Blow your hands in the air. It's time to throw Jezebel off the balcony. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, la, ba, 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 Jesus, 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 Jesus. Press it on you. Press it on you. Some of you need a press it We need some Jehus in the church. Time to throw Jezebel off the balcony. Thank you, Lord. Receive a greater anointing in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Greater anointing. Hallelujah. 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 We're going home. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going home, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, 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 thank you, Lord. I hear the Lord saying an anointing for strength, an anointing for strength. That's what I hear. It's got to be him. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Thank you, Lord. Strong, 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 strong. I'm strong. You are already solid as oak, strong, strong. In every affair. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just because you want it, throw your hands in the air. Because you came after it. You're like the woman with the issue of blood tonight. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord. Loop, sir, devil. Take it in Jesus' name. Every demonic spirit, come out of her now. Loose it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Heal, heal from strife. Confusion, we take it off of you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now walk in it. Walk in it. Yeah. Say this with me. I can do all things. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. God loves you, girl. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, I wish somebody knew how to have revival in your soul. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, glory, 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 glory. Glory, 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 glory. A wind of the anointing is in the room. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Revival in your soul tonight. Thank you, Lord. 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 Need those sometimes. Now on your way to your seat, tell somebody this. I'm not going back. Moving ahead. Here to declare to you. Our past, past is over. over and you. Hey. Our things 
Look at the power of God on the people of God. Moving, moving forward. Look at people going home, sitting, clothed, and in your right minds. Hey, thank you, Lord. I'm not going back. I want to hear that again. Say it, church. Past is over. Thank you, Lord. But stay right there. Hey, I'm not going back. Hey, I'm moving on. Hey, hey, hey. My past is over. Thank you, Lord. Give me the young man with the tan shirt on right there. That's my guy right there. Thank you, Lord. 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 Dave Jr., come stand behind him. Boy, you're a powerhouse. Yeah, lift your hands. Y'all say, you made, you
it again. Thank you, Lord. We get no pressure off of people. Say, I will follow you. We're going home one more time. All over the room. Everybody say, you have Yes, you. Last one. Say, I will. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 Now, now go and never be the same in Jesus' name. Now, that's just it. That's the end of that. Go and never be the same in Jesus' name. Let's receive a mighty offering tonight. That's the amen. There you go. That's how we celebrate it. You may be seated. Let's receive a mighty offering tonight. Amen. Now. Uh, we're gonna we gonna do some things, y'all. Are you excited about the debt burning ceremony? On, yeah, I am. I'm telling you that, and I see it in the room too. So we are gonna come together. If you have any debt in your life, and you would like to do what they did in the Book of Acts, we're gonna symbolically burn the books. You want to set some stuff on fire by faith? I want you to bring it on Saturday. All right, these guys are going to build a fire, all right? They'll put it on fire for you. Nobody's going to get burned, but you are going to be able to present those debts, and I believe supernaturally stuff just going to start falling off. Amen? Is anybody in agreement tonight? Y'all, if God could pay millions of dollars off in a ministry, what can he do in your personal life? Now, I believe that. I said I believe that. I believe that tonight. Amen. <laughs> So that's what we're doing on Sunday or, or on Saturday. We are going to run a different play, amen, because we have learned to be flexible with God. I believe this has become a mini conference. It was kind of conference style tonight. What y'all think? It, it kind of got everything from the Transformers to the points. Boy, I, I, I feel like I was preaching a faith conference. That was kind of fun. So we're going we to we we uh, run an audible. We were going to break the thing down tonight. It's already 937. We're not going to break the church down tonight. All right. We're going to break it down Friday night after Pastor Rondi preaches at 6 o'clock. What do you say? Amen. And he didn't ask me to preach. He didn't say, man, I'll be there. I would like to preach. Y'all, this is so organic. He decided weeks ago he was coming for the mortgage burning on Saturday, and I got this bright idea. I said, you going to be in town on Friday? I said, come on and do something on Friday night. That would be just fine with me. And, y'all, you come on out Friday night. Men, we're going to be business casual, so you have the opportunity to go open collar with a, with a sports jacket, but you all meet us here. And why are you starting at 6? I just want the Lord to have his way, and I want to do two things really well. I want you all to get done fast enough so that uh, you can set the sanctuary up. So we're going to bump up an hour instead of 6 o'clock because it's really family time anyway, all right? And that's what we're doing these days. We're going to bring in our kingdom family, all right? I call him Uncle Pastor Ronnie, <laughs> and we're going to bring him in, and we're just going to let him preach. Well, I don't know what he's going to preach tomorrow. He can talk about finances. He can talk more about the heart. Did you enjoy the heart tonight? Amen. Talk about whatever the Lord might give him. Um, but the only way that will change is if we send you a different email. But who will join me tomorrow at 6? Will you make provision to come? That's all I need. If I get that crew right there, I can have a mighty service. And you're going to get even stronger in the Lord. And you might get more deliverance. And he going to close the gate. I opened it tonight. He going to close the gate tomorrow. And that's, that's how we partner in ministry. Then I'm going to go down to, to KCOH and just have a tremendous time next week. And I might show them the Transformers. Not just for the message sake, because I like watching it. And so that, that's kind of really, I got stuck tonight. So we're going we gonna to see what the Lord do. But I want you to meet me tomorrow night at 6 and just, just come on out. And ladies, you want to wear pants, suits and stuff. Still, you know, presentable, but come on out. And then we're just going to have fun. And this is what I want you all to do. I want my team to help me with this. Melvin, uh, help me see this through. Um, after the service for the committee that's going to stay. There's some people that's got to stay and set up, all right? Just order a world of, uh, of pizzas, stuff like that, and just 
have uh, food for the people of God to just finger eat and fold, you know, put a put a reef up and take another bite. And, and we're just going to be family on Friday night. That sound good? Again, if some of y'all want to stick around or something, we're going to order plenty of pizzas. And, you know, if the only pizza is left is the veggie pizza, then just eat that. Okay? And don't start complaining about something that I'm giving you free. I, I don't want to hear all of that. We're going to order different varieties, but by the time you get there, all they got is cheese. Eat the cheese pizza, okay? And, and we're going to be happy in the Lord, and we're going to have a good time, okay? And so that's what we're going to do for the committee, for people that will be men that will be breaking the church down and women that will be decorating, okay? That's what we're going to do tomorrow night, and we'll make it festive. And you can have fun to about 10 o'clock tomorrow night setting up, then come back early Saturday morning. And if you are a tie paying uh, member, you might go home with a television. Amen. Or you might go home with a pocketbook or something that you like. Okay, they're going to be giving stuff away. Amen. And I'm going to sit down and relax my nerves. Amen. And, uh, and get ready to go. Now, I'll be preaching on Sunday, but I'm going to get ready to go to, to Houston. And uh, me and Pastor Ronnie got this thing uh, called getting all out of you. Um, so he, he has extended his conference another night. <laughs> and he wants to have some special meetings during the day now. Amen. So if I'm a little tired next Thursday, y'all just bear with me, okay? He, says he feels like he needs to get it all out of you. That's, that's this new thing we're doing. So I figure no sense in me letting him rest when he came up to go to the debt burning ceremony. No, we're going to have you preach. <laughs> Amen. And we're going to get it all out of you. That's going to be good. All right? So this is good. Tonight was great. What do you think? Great night. So let's receive <clears throat> a mighty offering that does not take away from what we're going to do on Sunday. We believe in for six figures in that interest-bearing account. <laughs> it's going to be great. And we're going to give an offering tonight, and we're going to make it happen on Saturday, too. So come on, get your best seed tonight. What was your deliverance worth you tonight? I hear the amount 500 in the room. I believe some people are the matches there. There, that's what I'm going to do tonight. Amen. What was the freedom that you got? Amen. Worth tonight. And then some, you don't play, pay for the anointing. Don't miss that. But I do believe we can say thank you through our offering. Amen. Don't pay for it, but say thank you. All right? Let's do our confession tonight. Say it with me. I'm blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed coming in, and blessed going out. I'm blessed in the basket and blessed in the store. My bank accounts, investments, health, and relationships flourish. The blessings of the Lord overtake me in all areas of my life. Do two things. Shout about it first. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> yeah. Amen. All right, now come on, make your own confessions. What are they tonight? Come on, what are they tonight? I decree in the name of Jesus that I increase more and more, and he blesses me and my family. Blessings of the Lord come upon me and overtake me. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm the head and not the tail. Philippians 4 and 19, he supplies all my needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Amen. Come on, believe you receive that by faith. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. All right, very good. Let's receive our offering tonight. These men are coming. All right. God bless you tonight, y'all. We are so excited about this tremendous wave of ministry that we're in. Okay. Uh, the, um, many of you uh, know that there are reassignments coming for those of you who are about to get a new uh, discipleship partner. Okay. Uh, we, are, we are sharing the load anyway. That was what we were going to be doing anyway. So get ready.